Back with Coach uh, Jason Simpson. Coach, can we change the subject? <laughs> <laughs> John Abel and Joe LaFarge are having a conversation. A medical conversation. Yeah, I want to like out. doctors. <laughs> I want to get out of this. <laughs> I want to tell you, Joe, though, is a very entertaining person to travel with, and I'm sure you have some assistant coaches who are <laughs> entertaining, too. But this is the funny thing. The man loves to get a haircut when we're on the road. He likes to just find a random barber shop. <laughs> <laughs> and get a haircut. Now, who would do that? I never heard of that. That's awesome, Joe. Don't you have a person who regularly cuts your hair? Cause you yeah, have, uh, that's awesome, though, you know, Joe. Joe will just find some. Does he get a shave, a clean yeah, shave, the whole yeah, deal? Yeah. So he's walking around downtown Mobile looking for a barbershop. Luckily, he found a Hardee's instead. <laughs> <laughs> so had breakfast instead of a haircut. That's that's the Philadelphia, New York, yeah, that's definitely Jersey. It. Any, yeah. that's, that's it. I mean. I was so leery. My own grandmother cut my hair for the first 26 years of my <laughs> life. <laughs> and Joe will go to anybody. But, but he got that, that Italian hair looking good. All right, uh, Coach, let's look at the Ohio Valley Conference, the Eastern Kentucky-Southeast Missouri score up at Richmond, 41-17. Yeah, East Kentucky's playing really well. You know, they had the setback against Austin P and and uh, I hadn't seen them on tape until uh, t- until yesterday when I started watching them getting ready for EIU. And they've changed their offense. They've gone to a more traditional pro style, and they're really running the football. They rushed for 200-something yards uh, a couple weeks ago against EIU. So uh, they're, they're still in the hunt, and they're a team we don't play until the end of the season. So uh, I'm sure they'll be ready to go when we get them. Jacksonville State now ranked 10th in the country, wins at Austin P 44-14. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm not, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, you saw what we did at Austin P and Jacksonville State's solid, and I think Austin P turned it over five times. Mm-hmm. And so they're, you know, just, uh, you know, you've got to be a really good football team to be able to beat a quality team, turn the ball over five times, and Austin P just uh, you can't overcome those. Tennessee State wins at Tennessee Tech, 42-40. Well, I, you know, I, I said during the week I thought that's what would happen. I didn't realize that it would be, you know, I didn't know Tennessee Tech would have to have four or five turnovers in order to be able to, to lose. Uh, so I was actually kind of impressed Tennessee Tech could score 40 points and still turn it over 40, you know, four times. So, mm-hmm. But Tennessee State's on offense each week has gotten better and better with the new quarterback that they're playing. So uh, that will certainly be a task for us. Now the thing is, you know, is uh, with Tech losing to Tennessee State and us, uh, you know, retaining the uh, Sergeant York Trophy or ha- in possession of it, if we beat Tennessee State, we will, we, based on the rules, how they're set up, we will retain the Sergeant York Trophy for next year. Right. And, you know, that's a rule I've been complaining about because I thought, hey, you know, we've been 2-1 and one before but did not get it because the other school had it and they were the same record as us. So, uh, so anyway, so maybe it'll come back and, and be in our favor this year and uh, we can keep that thing here in town. Murray State wins over Eastern Illinois. We were following that score on the air because they were playing when we were playing, 36-27. But a game in which Eastern Illinois led very late concerning. and could have won. Yeah, they were, they, were, they were up the whole game until the last three minutes of the game. And uh, Murray scored with a minute, 15 seconds left. And then EAU fumbled. And Murray runs two plays and scores again to win by 10. But, uh, you know, the thing that concerns me is Murray State, you know, offensively, um, you know, only had 386 yards. And that, although that's a lot of yards, for what they do offensively, it's not. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of walked around and never could get anything going against EIU. And, um, you know, EIU's is it may show up one and six, but there could be three and three, four and two, just like us. Let's talk about those standings now. Jacksonville State kind of sets itself apart from the rest of the conference at four and zero. Oh. Tech now three and one. Eastern Kentucky's two and one. Murray, UT Martin, Tennessee State, and Austin P all two and two in the conference. Southeast Missouri's one and three, and Eastern Illinois is zero oh and five. So other than us, uh, what records are not indicative indicative of the quality of the team there? I guess and. And I guess one Eastern Kentucky's one loss. You say they're a pretty good football team. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, and they'll be. And I'm not sure who this year plays seven. Uh, there's somebody that would only play seven conference games. Because That's right. Tennessee State and somebody else. I'm not sure who it is. Uh, but you know, uh, Eastern Illinois is the main one. They're I mean, better than 0 and five. They're they're better, and I think there's you know, and I won't say who, but I think there's one or two teams that have got a couple wins that. Uh, I think by the time it's said and done, they'll be at 500 at the best. Yeah. I think they were very fortunate to win early, but but they did. Mm-hmm. So um, I think EIU is the most, and that's what's scary. Talk to the team about that today. I mean, you're talking about a team with a great pride. In 2009 was their last playoff appearance, and, and been, you know, and since I've been in the league, I guess they've been three times to the playoffs in five years. Uh, you're talking about a head coach with a lot of pride that's, that's coached more games than I can, Bob Spoo, who's, who's lost more games than I've even coached in. Okay, even though, and, and he's got a great winning percentage. So uh, he's got a lot of pride. This is his last year. He's retiring. 
uh, you know, his football team does not want to see him go out, uh, you know, without a, a great OVC showing. Mm -hmm. This is our homecoming. We're playing another homecoming game. So, uh, you know, a lot of stuff to play for, so I think they're a very dangerous team. We're playing them Saturday, 1.30 kickoff in Charleston, Illinois. We go on the air at 1 o'clock with that. Coach, Jacksonville State now ranked 10th. Tech falls out of the uh, the rankings. And the, we got a vote, I thought, that which was nice. Well, I, I appreciate you or Joe voting for us. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I have a note, and I'm not going to go into much detail on mm -hmm. the air, but it says when you've lost three games to a couple ranked teams and then um, South uh, Alabama by seven points, you deserve votes. Well, okay, yeah. I, that's the first time I read that. Well, okay. Yeah. You know, and like I said, we told the team today, though, that you – we reviewed that. Seven, you lost to two ranked teams, and you lost to a the team that gives 85 scholarships. And so mm -hmm. – uh, but at the end of the day, you are what you are. You know, we're three and three, and we're two and two in the conference. So – uh, we, 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 we can't wait to Wednesday and, and get ourselves focused on EIU. It's got to start tonight. And when we go to practice, uh, it's such a fine line, um, you know, winning and losing. And, uh, you know. You well, and, uh, and the old cliche is it's a game of inches. And you know what? It really has been. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. You know, uh, uh, John always puts us together highlight tape. And one of the things he always does about once a year is he puts the, the Al Pacino um, thing on every any given Sunday. Uh, about, you know, it's just a fine line between mm -hmm. winning and losing. And then we got to scrape and claw, you know, to get that inch. You know, we got to do whatever we can to get that inch. That's kind of where we are. That's exactly where we are. And, I, you know, I was pretty harsh to, with some guys today and, and very, um, you know, truthful to them in front of our football team. We've got some guys that are making some plays, but we're not playing um, consistently without the football in our hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I, I pointed out some receivers that are making good plays, but they're not playing the other 35 plays. They're not making an impact in the game in their run blocking, in their in their effort down the field. And that was something I was really I was disappointed in this week. Uh, you know, and there's some other guys, too. we got to get Jason McNair going. You know, there's been two weeks since he's had – uh, has you know since he's had a statistical you know 100 yard game, and you know he's got to break some tackles. He's got to be more um, you know confident in his ability, and and you know I want Jason to tell me I need the football in my hand. You know, and it's okay sometimes for because we know Jason's not selfish, but I want him to be confident in his ability and tell me give me the football. I'll, I'll move. I'll you know I'll change field position for us. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things we can do to grow up with a little bit. Uh, you know, Derek played okay this week. Not great. He missed a couple throws. Uh, but just everybody, every coach in our, on our football team and our staff, you know, and every player has got to play a little bit better, uh, you know, if you want to, to be able to win some of these close games. Right. And that's what hurts is that you're so close. <laughs> you know. I mean, a little, a little bit better. Well, you can't, the difference. Yeah, you can't just sit around and, you know, just say, hey, sooner or later we're going to get a, a lucky break. You've got to make your breaks. You know, we had two turnovers. They had none. So when you've got turn a couple turnovers and, and you're not playing harder than the other team and you're not playing smarter than the other team, uh, you know, you're not going to win and you don't deserve to win. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a learning process that we're continuing to go, go through. And, uh, you know, law of averages do not pan out in 11 games. They, just, they do not. You have to make your, you know, your own luck, and we're right. going to do that. Unlike other sports because there's not as many opportunities. Yeah, you know, you don't no, get you're a couple, right. It's you're like right. baseball. You don't get a couple of duck snorts that are going <laughs> to fall in. And so, well, it's the same way with EIU. I mean, they're sitting there, and their players, you know, are they going to think this? Are they going to say, hey, we're 0-5, but, man, we played good this week. We played good against Jacksonville State. We lost 28-21. Sooner or later, the ball's going to bounce our way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't if you don't go practice hard. It doesn't if you don't watch tape. It doesn't if you don't play with tremendous effort and you know physicality on Saturday and 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 execute it does it won't bounce your way or if it does yeah you get lucky with that break but uh, but you've already given up three touchdowns and that one break doesn't make a difference shoot I'm fired up I'm gonna tackle John Abel come Me on too. I'm fired, <laughs> I, I, you know my, I love coming to see you but I tell you what to, you know come in after a game where we haven't played a, a, as well as we can I told our team that at, at halftime is that guys you know as, as a man, as a leader of your home one day, you know, you're not going to get everything that you want out of life. You want to be a millionaire, there's going to be stumbling blocks that, that may not allow you to get there. Mm -hmm. But if, you know, but if you've done everything you can to get there and you don't, you know, there's other things in life. Maybe God didn't have that, you know, in plan uh, store for you. So, uh, like I said, there are hard lessons that we're learning. Um, you know, doesn't feel like it right now, but it'll pay off down the road. Uh, off football topic for a second. In the hotel lobby prior to the game, you had family that was at yeah. the game, which had to be nice. And, yeah. and explain to me your uncle and the McNairs and how all <laughs> that works together. Yeah, pretty neat. Uh, my uncle, uh, Jackie, my dad's brother, Jackie Simpson, he was Jason uh, McNair and Julius McNair's uh, high school coach. 
And so that's how uh, we usually don't go that far south from recruiting high school players. And so, of course, he called me, and so I've got two. And, um, you know, and it's kind of funny now. This is an uncle that uh, was around me, you know, all my high school games and following my college career and stuff. And he played college football at Ole Miss as well. But yet now uh, when he texts me, it's how are my two doing? Uh, you know, he's not talking about my kids. Yeah. He's talking about Jason and Julius. And so mm -hmm. when they go home over Christmas break, they see him, and he's retired now. Uh, but that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me to, in twofold. One, because he would put his name on, you know, on the line for those two players mm -hmm. for us to sign, and he was 100% right with their character. And, you know, and two, that, uh, you know, they still think enough of him to stop and, and pay attention to their old high school coach. And, and uh, that just shows you kind of character and kind of kids they are. When, when he opened his mouth, when your uncle uh -huh. opened his mouth, I knew he was a football coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, he's, like I said, he's retired now and had some health issues. But uh, I was really glad he was. You know, I, I don't know if I can get him to come anymore, though. I tell you what, he came and watched us play against Memphis a couple of years ago <laughs> and we lost. And then he was at that game and we lost. And so and he was asking me for tickets for the Mississippi State game. Uh, so I might have no. to <laughs> may, have, may have to wait, you know, till a union comes back to town or something, and, and he can come to that game. How long is, had he been coaching? How long was he a coach? Well, uh, uh, I think at that high school, maybe like six, seven years. Mm -hmm. He 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 was in the power company for several years. Okay. Before he got back into coaching. So you were a coach. Well, he was a coach, and then got out of coaching and got back in. You, well, were you, know, you a coach before? I was. A part of the uh, reason you were a yeah. coach is because he was a coach, or no? No, no. He was actually a coach early in his in his married life. And then, uh, you know, like all educators, uh, you know, we thought there was some opportunities to, to uh, you know, the, the teacher's pay at that time was not very good back in the 70s. So he mm -hmm. probably went through a 20-year stretch work, working in a uh, different uh, telephone company and power company. And uh, and then I remember he and I had a conversation one day about, you know, every time I'd come home, he'd want to talk about my career. I was a young coach at Jacksonville State. And and uh, I think that that kind of, you know, maybe that sparked him to get back into coaching. Yeah, neat. And so neat, neat deal. So, but I was glad to be able to. They won a lot of football games here at Mount Olive, coaching and all the McNair kids that come through there. Absolutely. Coach, uh, we got a couple minutes. Eastern Illinois, what are we looking for in this team on Saturday? Uh, it's a desperate team, and, and we've got to be more desperate. And, and that doesn't mean you uh, forget fundamentals and stuff, but you're looking at a team that uh, they've, given, they've, they've had a hard time stopping the run this year. Okay, uh, they stopped against Murray, even though they're back at 100 something yards. But that's all the rushing yards that they had. So uh, you know we got to try to run the football just like always. And if we don't run it any better, we have the last two weeks, we'll be in trouble because uh, they play the pass very well. Uh, so they held Murray to like a little over 200 yards passing this week, which is probably 150 yards below their average. Mm -hmm. Okay, so offensively we got to get back to our mix uh, when when we can run it. You know, it's got to be one or the other. Either throw it to open up the run, or run it to open up the throw. But you know, last uh, this past week, we did neither one of them very well. Right. And uh, defensively, uh, you know, we, we, they're going to throw the football. I think they're throwing for 250 yards a game, about as much or more than we are. Got an outstanding quarterback, uh, but they want to. You know, they're struggling in the run game, and we've got to, we've got to, we've got to take away the run game, like most teams have done to them. Continue to make them one-dimensional. Get after the quarterback. Tackle well in our zones. Uh, you're going to give up some passing yards, okay, and that's okay, yeah. but let's keep them out of the red zone. And when they get in the red zone, let's tackle and force them to field goal. So uh, we've never won there, okay. Our program has never won a game at that stadium. The last time we were there, we really got kind of got our fanny spanked. Uh, then 2009, when they won the conference championship, uh, it, it got kind of ugly. I think it was about 48 or 50 something to 17 or something. Mm -hmm. So we we've got to redeem ourselves. And and uh, I'm 0 2 there as a head coach. So we've got a lot a lot to prove. And uh, I'd love to go, uh, you know, kind of be somebody else's homecoming. Uh, um, spoiler. Spoiler. Yeah. That's the best way to look at it. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll see you Saturday. Thanks so much. Have a good practice right. tonight. Coach Jason Simpson running right to the practice field here as he leaves Skyhawk Talk. We'll take a break and come back with more in just a few minutes.